Hello, everybody. It is Healthy Emmy and Healthy Mummy. We are currently on vacation in the beautiful Turks and Caicos. <laughs> Can't you tell by how relaxed I am? <laughs> So we are doing a Q&A and you submitted questions, my clients submitted questions. So we're gonna start with my clients' questions because they get preference because they're the best. Mm -hmm. If you're new here, hey, I'm Healthy Emmy. I'm a nutritionist, a weight loss specialist, and the creator of the Slim on Starch program where you work with me as well as a mindset coach and a nutrition coach to lose weight on a plant-based diet. If you wanna do that, click the link in the down bar. And this is Healthy Mummy, my terrific mom, who went through the Slim on Starch program. And what were the two big things that happened, mom, when you went through the Slim on Starch program? Um, I lost my menopausal weight gain and I lowered my cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And we documented the whole thing so you can watch it here on my channel. We got a lot of questions about what we ate on vacation, which I am doing a whole separate video on, but that's more so what I was eating. I pretty much stuck to SOS, but this was a trip to celebrate Healthy Mummy's retirement after 40 years of working as a pediatric hospital nurse. So do you want to talk a little bit about how you handled food here? Um, I think that what worked for me really well is that I did pack some basic things to bring just some um, oats, which is easy to reconstitute in the morning because um, they had some morning activities here, like a yoga class that I did every morning. And it was nice to have just a little something to eat without, without having to go through the, you know. The room service right, you know, and going the restaurants. restaurants. Whatever. And um, I'm big on getting off to a good start. So I thought that that was um, helpful and important. I think that you did something really, and it's, it's a little something that's going to make a big difference you sectioned out in little plastic baggies each day of oatmeal i did it was pretty easy that makes a big difference if you just bring a container of oats versus if you have each day sectioned out you're going to use it because the day is sectioned out you don't mm -hmm. want to put it back into your suitcase and bring right. it back so what was in each one of those baggies for each day of your morning oats well, i'll tell you i didn't know it was such a good idea because i did it that way for packing purposes mm -hmm. because it's so much stuff jammed in my carry-on um, I just put in one cup of oats which is what I have at home and I mixed in some raisins that was it yeah usually she does her carrot cake oats from the healthy mommy cookbook with the shredded carrot and mm -hmm. the blueberries but making a little bit of an adjustment because we are in paradise right mm -hmm. and do you want to talk a little bit about how you've had some treats and you know, some cocktails while you're here because this is a celebration in your vacation and how you yeah. find balance with that. Yeah, I didn't um, I didn't sort of punish myself or restrict myself because I know that this is short term, it's temporary. I'm here to really celebrate and enjoy myself, not what I normally do. Um, but I didn't go off the rails, so to speak. No. At all. At all. Um, the resort that we're in offers um, a lot of options. And Emily um, befriended the chef, which was a wonderful experience separately and all unto itself. Um, so it's been easy. Yeah, and the chef has been so kind and accommodating for me, bringing me baked sweet potatoes galore. Mm -hmm. But for Healthy Mummy, he said, does she have any dietary restrictions? I said, she's vegan. And he brought her a vegan cake that said, happy retirement. He learned that panna cotta was always her favorite dessert and so made her a vegan one and surprised her with it. So because mm. Healthy Mummy is so on the straight and narrow with SOS when she's at home, it's okay to have these indulgences. Yeah, I think that a lot of people say, you know, I'm, I'm good when I'm home and then I go on vacation, I go off the rails. That's really not what happened here mm. because this vacation has been very namaste for us yeah. and eating with intention yeah. and it's not an excuse for you to go off the rails by any stretch of the imagination no, no. and i wasn't going to let anything to interfere with uh, really enjoying this vacation so it's been fine mm -hmm. somebody asked how did you get the chef to accommodate to your dietary yeah. requests it's a very simple answer i just asked if you never ask the answer is always no. Right. You may as well just ask. You have nothing to lose. And if you are very kind and understanding, I think why it worked is because I told him very directly what I wanted so that, you know, I didn't walk up and say, hey, I'm oil-free vegan and I don't eat this and this and this. I, I said, can you bake sweet potatoes for me? Mm. And he was like, that's all you want? <laughs> of course I can do that. It takes two seconds. Yeah. So being very direct and asking, can you do this? 
knowing that the answer might be no and it's okay I'd figure it out if it was but you got to ask right. it's not going to happen they can't read minds mm -hmm. and if you are too nervous to ask then i'm sorry but you're not going to get anywhere and i can't do it for you you got to advocate for yourself right. we're not the demanding types and this is a very accommodating um, resort and they want they want you to have what you want. Mm -hmm. Patricia asks, what is your favorite part about your vacation together? The fact that we have such a great relationship that we actually enjoy being together. You can't beat that. Yeah. Um, but this. But forget about her. <laughs> have you seen the view? It's been great. We really. genuinely, we always have yeah. been best friends. Yeah, we do get along great. I remember when I was in middle school, like everyone hated their moms. Mm -hmm. And I was like... <laughs> I love my mom. Like I was waiting for that period to come. Like, oh, you'll go through this stage when yeah. you guys are just yeah. that never happened mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. It's always been us against the world. Yeah. Yeah. So we love being with one another. We're gonna be together all next weekend too yeah, on a trip. True. We don't get sick of one another. No. Oh, but I didn't answer what my favorite part is. Oh. My favorite part has been watching you have this experience that you've been waiting for <laughs> right. your entire life like your reaction to when you saw the water yeah, it's almost an embarrassment really but it's just magical yeah because yeah. this is this is a very special thing that we're that we're doing together and i know how much you appreciate it so yeah. for me to be able to watch you and you really do appreciate it it's oh, yeah. so fulfilling yeah oh this is a good one from kathleen what were each of your favorite primary foods while on the trip? Um, being in the oh, being in the water. Mm -hmm. This water, it, I mean, if this isn't heaven, I don't know what is. Um, you know, when you grow up in New England and you if you can throw yourself in in August <sighs> for a second, and here you just stroll in. It's warm. It's beautiful. It's turquoise. It's like a pool, nature's pool. The if you Google image search. Turks and Caicos Beach, you see it and you're like, yeah, but it doesn't, like, that's a desktop background. That's not what, that's what Microsoft used on their desktop backgrounds. Yeah. That's not what it looks like in real life. That is what it looks like in real life. Yeah. It's insane and to be colors. present for that. But my favorite primary food actually has been me talking with the staff here yeah. and the people that live so here. Great. They're just wonderful. And I love learning about the people that live here and what it's like for them and have they always lived here. And I just find it fascinating for there's people from all over that we've mm -hmm. met. So I, I really like talking to the people that work here because yeah. it's just interesting to learn about what it's like from their perspective. Yeah. It's and a very different culture. They're so kind yeah. and they're a hoot. Like one of the <laughs> one of the waiters sat down with us at dinner the other night because we were waiting for our food and he goes, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> they're great. They're great. Yeah. Jackie asks, how do you show compassion toward your body? I have, I have trouble with showing compassion toward my body. Yeah, I know what you mean. And the older that I think it, it, for women, um, it travels with you throughout your life. And when you get older, um, it can be difficult. I feel really healthy, and that helps me accept the aging process because I feel great. And I've been to four, how many yoga classes here and held my own. And um, that's what makes me more accepting of the things that are changing. So we are co-reading while we're here, The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. So we wanted to read the book, same book, well, was my idea, <laughs> read the same book at the same time so that we could talk about it while we're here. And we decided, well, I decided to read The Sur Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And this is exactly what he talks about, is having compassion toward the inner critic, the voice inside of your head that can be very critical to you instead of pushing it away and be, oh, stop, stop saying that, stop saying that you're not good enough or your hips look horrible or your legs or your hair strain gray, you have wrinkles. Instead of saying, don't listen, don't listen, actually have some compassion for that voice and say, let's change, let's look at this a little bit differently mm -hmm. and let's change the narrative here. And you have to practice speaking to yourself in the way that you want that inner voice to talk. Uh, to just push it away and say, stop with the negativity, stop with the negativity. That inner voice doesn't know what to say instead. And so that's where things like positive affirmations are super helpful. And they feel so cheesy, but they are so powerful for rewiring your brain and changing what the voice inside of your head says. Mm -hmm. 
So you could do a simple Google search of positive affirmations about your body and start practicing those aloud to help that inner voice create a new dialogue as, a, as opposed to pushing away the inner voice. Mm -hmm. Taylor asks, Healthy Mummy, how did you feel about Emmy's career switch when it wasn't yet actualized? Yeah. So I'll just give some context. Yeah. I used to be a math teacher and I moved to Australia and I taught when I was there and then I moved back home and I left teaching to do this full time. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start by saying Emily is my third child. So I had a lot of practice before. So I didn't she... care by then. <laughs> so I had a lot of practice. And when I knew that she, when she was doing both at the same time, teaching and developing this really passionate interest in this new um, career, she was able to um, ver verbalize why she needed to make the decision, the hard decision, to stop teaching and really give this a chance. And it, it just made sense. You know, you couldn't let that dream go. It wasn't like she was saying, I'm quitting teaching and I'm going to lay on the couch for the next six months. Um, she had a plan. And she was just really um, solid about it. And it really wasn't a fear uh, base change for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never really thought about it from your guys' perspective because I'm pretty headstrong and when I say I'm going to do something, it yeah. gets done. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting question though. What's your morning routine? I'll let you answer what your morning routine is. Um, I have a pretty um, concrete morning routine that I do follow pretty religiously. Um, I get up early and I rarely, if ever, sleep in late. Um, I get up early, I make a cup of tea, I meditate. I do yoga and I go for a walk. That's my morning routine. Oh, do you remember Jen who came to see you for a healing? Yeah, yeah, I do. She said, love you both. I need to visit Healthy Mummy again oh, soon. So Healthy Mummy does integrative energy therapies. Like Reiki. So if you live in the Boston area and you're interested in getting a healing from her, send me an email, support at healthymummy.org, and you can do a healing with Healthy Mummy where how does it work? You lay on the table yeah, very, and you release energy from the body? Uh, yeah, and bring uh, energy in and um, chakra work, stuff like that. Yeah, so if you're into that, let us know. Mm -hmm. Somebody asks, what's your relationship like? Has it improved since your mom went vegan like you? Our relationship's been the same since day one, I think. Since the day I was born. Yeah, since the day she was born. It's just she's not a difficult person. Um, I mean, I had two boys and I had a girl. That was a massive treat. And uh, we, I don't think we've ever had a fight. I don't, I, don't think we, I don't think we've ever had a fight. No, I'm just not interested in that. You know, if, I'm sure I do things, I know I do things that annoy her. Um, and, but we just don't go there. We just. Yeah, and I know I'd kill you in a fight. So it's not even, <laughs> we both know, it's not even worth my yeah, time. Yeah, we get along fine. What do you guys do during stressful times when it's easy to fall off plan? I personally think you have to pause because it's so easy to just jump in to um, the brownies, the cookies. The, it's so easy. And if you just take a breath and if you just get something else, like, um, you know, I've had a lot of apples down here. Just if you always have something healthy around, it makes it a lot easier because once you're full and satiated, then that, that crazy craving kind of goes away, I think. Yeah, I remember you said one time you were at the hospital and there was the Dunkin' Donuts with the strawberry frosted donut staring at you. Right, right. And sometimes she would send me photos and you'd say, look what's at work. I'm not eating it. I'm right. staying away from it. Even that is hugely helpful. To, yeah. That's why I have my clients take photos of what they're eating because it creates the pause yeah. between you and the action, creating distance between you and that action. So if you're going to have that food, still have it, but at least pause and be aware because that's part of the stages of change is yeah. being aware and noticing that you're doing it and creating more and more distance. I talk about with my clients, the goal may not be extinction of certain behaviors, but reduction in the frequency and the intensity. Right. So if you do find yourself turning to food during stressful times, making that a less often occurrence and making it not a huge binge fest every time you do. Right. We had just been to a family... Um, barbecue and I realized that I you know I had a cookie I had a brownie and I, I knew I was doing it and I'm like all right it's done stop I'm not going to punish myself for it but it's very easy um, to just sort of get in the grabbing game I think that's another thing too is many people once they have one they say 
Well, oh. I already messed it up, so yeah, I may as don't. well have. But that's not true. If you drop your phone, you get a crack in it. You don't take a hammer and then <laughs> smash it to bits. You right. can stop. You can stop right there. Say, wait a minute. Yeah. That's not aligned with who I want to be. I don't think I'm going to do any more. Yeah, all is not lost. Well, we're going to enjoy the rest of our vacation. Yeah. So thanks for doing this Q&A with me. Thanks. I adore you all, and we'll see you in the next one.